Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on differential equations. This is video number 39, or video 4 in the subsection on the wave functions of the hydrogen atom. Specifically, I'm going to discuss quantum numbers. So there are a lot of videos previous to this which are relevant in one form or another, and they're all listed there. The most important of which is video number 38, where I discuss the hydrogen atom. And towards the end of that particular video, I also discuss quantum numbers, angular momentum, uh, the orbitals and so on. So this particular video number 39 is just discussing the quantum numbers which are introduced in video 38. So in many respects it's nothing new. Just to recap, we are trying to solve for the wave functions of the electrons for hydrogen. So we said that their wave function in spherical coordinates was a function of three coordinates or theta and phi. So plugging this into the Schrodinger equation give us a PDE or partial differential equation which of course is difficult to solve. So we use the method of separation of variables, where we say that psi can be broken down into the product of three single variable functions, or capital R, capital theta, and capital phi. So doing so, we found the following, that when we broke out or took out capital R, the relationship between the radial function and the angular function was made by the separation constant, and I called it capital A. And then the relationship between the two radial, excuse me, between the two angular functions was the separation constant capital B. And I motivated in uh, video 32 that we could rewrite the separation constant A as an integer L outside of L plus one. So that's what we used when we were solving for the, uh, the radial equation. And in, uh, in video number 34, I showed that the separation constant capital B was equal to another integer, let's say m, to be squared. Now, I didn't prove uh, the following, but it is the case that this L integer corresponds to the orbital angular momentum quantum number, and this m integer co corresponds to the magnetic quantum number. So the magnetic quantum number is um, used because it's accounts for what happens in strong magnetic fields and it turns out that we require it, like I said, to, to discuss strong magnetic fields. Now in video 38 I also introduced the principal quantum number capital N. So on the top left of your screen we found that N is equal to J max plus L plus 1. Now by the way I noticed two typos on this page in video number 38 and I'm quite embarrassed about them. First of all it's L plus one. It's not L minus one I had in, as I had in video 38. And you also see that I had a typo down here as well. But I'll discuss that in a moment. Anyway, when we're trying to solve for the radial equation, we had to use the method of power series. So we had the infinite power series and we had the indice j, which went to in infinity from zero. And you had some function inside there. So this is the j max that I speak about on the left hand side. So we see that the principal quantum number n is equal to j max plus l plus 1, where l is the orbital angular momentum quantum number. Now both l and j start at 0 and go to infinity in integer steps. So this implies that n is non-zero. Okay, because for example if you plug 0 into both of these you find that n is equal to 1. So the minimum number or minimum value for n is in fact 1. Now, Look at the equation. If L is equal to zero, then we find that N is equal to J max plus one. So this is the minimum value for L. Also, well, L technically can be any number. It can be an infinite number if you like. But we want N to be finite. So if N is to be finite, L cannot be greater than N minus J max minus one. Also, L is largest, L is largest at J max is equal to zero, it seems. So let's say if I had L is equal to this, right? So L is largest at J max is equal to zero. Now, by the way, in video 38, I actually had that N is largest at J max is equal to zero, which is clearly incorrect. So what this implies is that L max is in actual fact N minus one, or L must be between uh, 0 and n minus 1. So now what we found is that the principal quantum number n goes from 1 to infinity in integer steps 
but also that the angular orbital angular momentum quantum number L goes from 0 to n minus 1 in integer steps. Now it's time to introduce all the quantum numbers. So on the top right of your screen I've written the quantum numbers. To start off with we have the principal quantum number n and as I said it goes from 1 to infinity in integer steps. Next we have the orbital angular momentum quantum number L. It goes from 0 to n minus 1 as I just said in integer steps. So far this is nothing new. Now when I discussed the polar angle equation uh, we were able to show that the magnetic quantum number goes from minus L to plus L. So that's something I won't need to discuss here. But the magnetic quantum number, as I said earlier on, is important for discussing electrons in strong magnetic fields. Now I haven't discussed spin. So spin is an intrinsic property of all bodies or all particles. Now it's, it's inferred from experiment such as experiments like the stern gerlach experiment and what is seen in experiment or observed in experiment cannot be explained using orbital angular momentum alone so it implies another quantum number we call it the spin quantum number m sub s now note that m sub s goes from minus s to plus s in integer steps now i still haven't told you what s is so just let's go down to the middle of the page. I say, we say the spin may be an integer or a half integer. So it can be, let's say a half, one, three over two, two, five over two, or what, what have you. So let's say I can tell you that an electron has a spin of one half. Now what that implies is that its spin quantum number is minus a half, or quantum numbers are minus a half and plus a half. So electrons have two spin states plus a half and minus a half so let's say for example you had a particle with a spin of 7 over 2 it would have a lot of spin states going from minus 7 over 2 to plus 7 over 2 in integer in integer steps but the electron only has two uh, spin states because its spin is one half and has two spin quantum numbers minus one half and plus one half in addition to this, we have the total angular momentum quantum number. It's j, and it's equal to L plus m sub s. Note, by the way, it is different to the j we have solving for the principal quantum number. It is different to that. So we say that it is L plus m sub s. Now just, a, just to clear something up, sometimes people won't even use, they won't use m sub s. They may instead just call it s. And well, you know, then it's it's difficult to define it. But I suppose to be most clear, it use two numbers, m sub s and s. But sometimes people just use s. You just need to be aware of that. So now that we know the quantum numbers, it's time to show how we calculate the actual value of let's say the total angular momentum or the spin angular momentum or whatever it is. So we use small letters n, l, m sub l, and m sub s, and j for the quantum numbers, but we use capital letters for the total value. So capital S, capital J, and capital L are the values for the total spin, the total total angular momentum, and the total orbital angular momentum. And how we calculate them is as follows. Let's say I want to calculate the total orbital angular momentum, capital L. So I get the orbital angular momentum quantum number L, outside of L plus 1 and I square root it. I do something similar for the total spin and for the total orbital angular momentum. And that's really it. So the quantum numbers, they are very important because we're, we're talking about quantized angular momentum, for example, talking about quantized energy levels because the principal quantum number defines your energy levels. So the quantum numbers, just to, to recap, they come from applying separation of variables to our wave function, and they relate the different parts, the different parts of your wave function, your radial, your azimuthal, and your polar. And um, they can be written as, as follows. So that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment in the comment box below.